lot of people have been talking about this Dark Phoenix situation. Let me take the glasses off. We gotta be serious about this today, all right? This is real talk. And i um, seen a lot of heat, a lot of people with a lot of emotions, a lot of feels on it. Like, it's destroying the franchise and whatnot, and yada, yada, yada. First of all, let me start from the beginning, okay? I've hated every single X-Men movie pretty much that's ever come out in the history of time. The first one, when I was like a youngster, made me want to vomit all over my Age of Apocalypse comic books. That's just what it is. I almost went straight to Image after all of that. Now, when we get on the movies, um, I have a couple of primary complaints about every action movie I've ever watched. First of all, every movie is basically first class. Like it was a rehash of an origin story. And unlike everybody else's origin story, like Blade, Captain Marvel, Panther, everybody else, even the villain's origin stories, they're still throwing hands. It's like every X movie you ever watched, they've been hot, the hottest of garbage from day one and didn't get much better by the middle to the end of the movie and or trilogy and or what franchise, whatever you want to call it. So I got a major problem with the fact that my understanding of the X-Men is they got they go in a danger room, they lift weights, these fools is on keto, right? They modifying powers, learning how to perfect their craft. This is a this is a tactical strike team designed to drop far more powerful opponents. Side note, why Magneto is not floating around in the in the in the in the air with a little magnetic bubble, you know, going be gone. You know, and if it, since he's not doing the EO Eshmato and all that stuff, I already got a problem because I have not seen that in the entire trilogies, plural. Uh, never does he get that live. The point is when they drop people like Apocalypse and Mr. Sinister and then you know Juggernaut, these are people that are more powerful than them. So my first gripe with every action movie pretty much in existence is that I always want to break it off into a one-on-one -on -one samurai shampoo. You take that dude. I'm going to match up with this dude who's got similar powers. Then I'm going to have Storm throw some chick on a wall, you know, a fence, and then electrocute it. Some garbage like that. Everybody on the whole team is supposed to have hands. You want to check my, my, my credentials there? Rogue whooped everybody and became leader, depending on which story you're talking about. She throws hands. Then, and so you got a female tank, but you don't even get to see that stuff. That never happens. Nightcrawler is live. Leader in his own group, Excalibur, throws hands, has a, uh, a fury, eyes turn red. He goes in. Only in X-Men 2, the opening, do you even get to see some live action like that. Um, matter of fact, you get to see a little bit of it in this movie, which I appreciate it. My man went in with the shank. So I'm going to say about it. I don't want to spoil it for y'all. Um, Beast is supposed to be dope. Dude is never alive. Got Captain America, who's less powerful than Beast, as far as I understand. I might be wrong. Outshines Beast all the time. I'm like, Beast is pretty much supposed to be Black Panther slash Captain America in the way his moves are animalistic, highly acrobatic, and whatnot. I don't really get to see that to this last one. Because if you count that fight with Psylocke in Age of Apocalypse, where they fought Ivan Ooze, right? If you want to count that, garbage. The wire work wasn't even good on that. When y'all was floating around, it was like a bad version of Crouching Tiger, Hidden, Hidden Mutant. It was not good. I'm getting off on another topic here. But the point is, they have not been able to throw hands. They have not had good team movement, good strategy. They were not a unified force. Basically, what Avengers has been is what my understanding of what X-Men was supposed to be the entire time. So I'm mad salty about that. Let's just start with saying that I'm mad salty when it comes to that particular scenario. So that's number freaking one. Uh, number two, you, they change so much stuff. And the problem is, like, I don't understand why so much stuff has changed from the comic books. I understand maybe the directors want to do their own spin or whatever. But here's the deal. The comic books with all these different universes and seasons and whatever and sales records tell you what the fans like. The fans literally tell you what they like. I don't want y'all changing storylines all the way around and doing a whole lot of weird stuff. So because of these things, the fact that they pretty much have been garbage the entire time they're in creation, they never get good, they never really resemble the X-Men, and since they change the stories up a lot of times, we miss the actual dynamics from the team that we enjoy, right? Um, 
I never really enjoyed any of the X-Men movies. So that's what that is. We move into this film. Plot-wise, people want to have a whole lot of emotions. There's some things I didn't really like about it. It was I. I probably give it a three out of five. It was okay. It's their version of the Dark Phoenix. I'm gonna just say it right now. They got an alien race, but it ain't the Shi'ar Empire, as far as I can tell. I don't even know if these people really existed, but I'm not. And listen, there's gonna be a couple of spoilers. I'm not gonna try to ruin it, but there's some spoilers, right? Um, the trailer does a very good job of making you confused about what you're watching. It's not, so I give them kudos on that. That trailer is somewhat misleading. Well done, gentlemen. Well done. Uh, the plot's okay. Camera maneuvers are nice. They got some interesting top-down shots they're doing. Professor Xavier entering your know, cerebro. And they just did some cool stuff with, like, showing, like, depicting a car accident. They had some good in-camera, you know, in-the-car uh, camera maneuvers. I like the shot selection. It's some interesting things with that. So, plot, acting, all that. You know, you know my thing is a weight. It's the Vonsky Thunder. So, it's weighted towards the action. It was I. All right, okay. No complaints. You know, McAvoy is good in everything, so whatever. And they actually killed somebody. I ain't gonna say who, but it's somebody I've never been a fan of, and I'm glad they're dead because I didn't like them even being involved with the team on the X Men in the first place. But I'm saying zero names right now. Cool. So I <coughs> thought that character was mad boring. So that happens. Uh, let's talk about camera. Camera's pretty good. I give the camera four out of five. Standard fare, Hollywood fare, but they mix it with some good shots. Very solid execution. I appreciated it. Some fun stuff. Uh, we get into number three. All right. We're going to talk about the hands and the action. Let's talk about this for a second. First of all, Nightcrawler gets some shine. He does what he's supposed to do. I mean, there's some parts where the in the middle of fight scenes, they're doing a whole dramatic pause. Like, yo, man, you'd have been that dude would have been dead. It would have been your fault because you're up here looking off into the distance of the camera. Directorial choice, it's whatever. All I'm going to say is that the action was dope. Nightcrawler got some shine. Beast played zero games. The wire work in this, clearly they've been watching the other Marvel movies. The wire work was good. So when Beast smacks somebody, they go flying like they're supposed to. Cyclops finally get some shine there's a couple sections in here where i'm like yo cyclops could have ended that whole situation with one blast but whatever he's bouncing ricocheting shots off the joint off off of different things popping people great level of control you know he's supposed to be like a mathematical genius or something but you know angles and geometry he was dope really enjoyed kind of how they used him i mean i never really liked the dude because he seems mealy mouth freaking whiny very angsty with the thing he does with his lip gene oh. Uh, Gene, uh, come back to me, Gene. Uh, uh, uh. I don't really like all that, but other than that, whatever. You know, uh, Lady Winterfell does her thing. Sansa Stark, a lot of rage. Someone told me she was as dope as Ebony Maw with her power. That was a lie. You lying? I don't know why you lied to me like that. She did have more power than him. She would have. She would have ended his life. But she was not more skilled with her powers. I don't think than he was in Avengers. That was just the thought I had. When I watched Avengers, like, oh, this person's telekinetic. Jean Grey, she used her powers like this. So they did a pretty good job with the use of powers. She did a pretty good job. She had some cool stuff, did some cool effects. She was very, you know, still kind of teen angsty. Who am I? I'm finding my way. Uh, I need to learn how to be a better me. What's this darkness? What's this darkness? Professor, it's your fault. You know, a lot of stuff like that, which they run every single time they do this. So it's, it's fine. That was all cool. That was all good. Um... I am going to spoil one thing. Favorite thing I liked about the Shi'ar Empire uh, in in the, uh, the Phoenix Saga in the comics was when Gladiator came down and he just he just snatched up uh, Juggernaut like he was a chump. That was my favorite part. That part's not in this movie. That's all I'm going to tell y'all about that. We're not going to get into it. As far as hands are concerned, though, people were throwing hands. Magneto was live. Like, he was hand-to-hand -hand and using magnetism. He was like, behold, just putting it on people. First, side note, I need Cyclops at some point to do this with his with his hands. He needs a cock back with oh. and then he do the screen. I need them to give me that. He's still shooting the super power beams and a fin. I want to see the big one that like obliterates the whole screen and erases people from existence. I want that Omega beam. Right, they need to throw that. Get in there. But he did a good job. Everybody did a good job of fighting. Everybody was throwing hands. Except obviously Professor Xavier, because you know. He in a wheelchair, so we don't really count him. But everybody else got it in. The fight sequences were good. 
what I liked about the villains is that they they kind of had a good base stat so they could step in and just be wild and just just, just fight like animals. What was funny is that they were like dress like like IKEA salesmen, right? They was in like business casual. It was like a Friday Friday at the office. They got blazers and loafers and, and, and low and low low reasonable heels on, which I thought was hilarious. That everybody looked like they came from like straight from like an old navy old navy sales conference gap or something right to right to the fight scenes and you'll see what i'm talking about when you see it and i kind of liked it and they did something i actually thought was pretty cool right they didn't do the three-point stance so since they're super you know people are super strong if you land you don't have to drop down in three-point joint they just land boom and the fight those bad guys are fighting kind of like agent smith there was a lot of running a lot of just brute force. I love the way they did that, and I love the way the team got to handle that. I'm saying it again, Beast was shining in this movie, okay? He never gets to shine, and my man was a shiny, shiny, glimmering blue demon. Just vicious with the execution. Flipping around, slinging people, knocking folks into the cosmos. Love it. Um, so as far as the action is concerned, in this movie, it was far better, superior, to every X-Men movie I think I've ever seen, ever. And I I think this movie is very watchable. I don't know if it's like $15 full-blown watchable, but like definitely like a $10, $12 joint, definitely worth watching this movie. So that's my two cents. Agree with that. Don't agree with that. I understand. Um, leave your comments below. I know this is polarizing. I might do a more in-depth review at a later date. I don't know. But um, maybe with some video, some screenshots, I don't know what I'm going to do. Point is, I want to hear what y'all got to say because I got my film fam and these dudes is like, they're roasting this film. They're roasting it. I also want to say shout out to the stunt team. I saw some people I know from LA that was in there, like Carrie and some other individuals. Congratulations. Y'all doing y'all thing. I loved it. Um, I love seeing my people do work. I love seeing my people get out there and stunt folks get an opportunity to, to, to wreck and get wrecked and shot. Love y'all. Ben Reddick, Vaughn's Conductor, Dark Phoenix. How at your boy. Put your opinions below. I want to hear what y'all got to say. Let's turn this into like a hundred comment rage fest.